It's about 3.08 p.m. Today is the 17th of November, 2017. We're doing a budget work session to kind of go over. Um, we kind of finished up public works yesterday, some of the water and the wastewater, and we're going to look at all of the budget once more today. I don't know if anybody has anything specific. I have about three things I want to cover. I know Dave's got some questions. Why don't we look at what Randy gave us, the fee schedule, because pretty much everything we decided yesterday or had consensus on applies, <coughs> excuse me, applies to this fee schedule. So if you remember, there are multiple things that make up our bill. It isn't just the, the rates themselves. We've got debt retirement, a base fee, and the volume rate on the water and the wastewater. So what we kind of agreed to, just to reiterate yesterday, was that the retirement on the water would go up just a little bit in the case of the smaller lines, the three quarter inch lines, or the one inch, would go up just 50 cents. That's the debt retirement. Then garbage collection, which has nothing to do with the water, but that's part of the fee schedule, would go down 25 cents. So we're only, we've only got a 25 cent there. And the base fee, which right now is $9 for wastewater is gonna stay the same. That retirement for wastewater is going down 10 cents. And the monthly fee is staying at $7. These are all the basic three quarter inch and one inch lines. And the water volume rate would stay at 866. So in essence, we are not raising the water rate per thousand gallons, and we're not wa raising the wastewater rate per thousand gallons. We are just raising the debt just a little bit and reducing the garbage. Well, then the overall total for increase for the whole year is a dollar eighty cents, with all the minuses and pluses. For, for everyone, for $1.80, Lois. How do you come dollar. up with that? Well, if you go up, you're taking a quarter away from garbage, and you're going down on the wastewater, 35. So if you, you total everything, at the end of the year, it's a $1.80 increase. Oh, at the end of the year? For the whole year. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. I was going to say, yeah, no. It's, 50, it's only 15 it cents a, a month. Yeah. I think we can afford that. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's just residential. We start looking at some of the others that are being, being adjusted in that too, so. But not, not much, not much. Dollar, two dollars. The bigger ones are getting more hit. Yeah, the retirement's going up quite a bit on the bigger lines. 50 cents and a dollar on my, my business. So it's not overwhelming by any means. It's doable. The biggest one I could see would be the 10 inch line was $49. And there's only three of those. I was just say there's only two or two or three and those are the big box stores. And I think they can absorb it after their tax decrease. <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions or issues on any of that? I just have one on reader meter. Read the meter. Does that mean when they go out to read? Because all of them are pretty much on automatic readers right. now. So if, if they're forced to actually go to a house and read a meter for some reason, you know, anybody maybe that isn't hooked up or just an extra, that seems legitimate. Anything else? Well, everything else, like in the fire department and assessing, um, that's all staying the same zoning permits and maps and text amendments and everything staying the same. Okay. Ah, oh, there's John. Sorry for being late. That's okay. Apologize to the chair. We were just more worried about you. If you talk too much, <laughs> I get problem. All right, do you want to get into the next? Then he, uh, Randy also ran a, an updated budget. 
He's got a board, board adoption numbers in here for us based on what we kind of said yesterday. Actually, Lois put that together and I just oh, sent thanks, it out. Lois. <laughs> However, if, I, if I'm correct, there's only one question is whether or not law enforcement is 60 or 80 hours, right, Randy? Well, there, there, were, there were two items that we didn't really have the ability to, to act on. One, that was a discussion item, was a, a recommendation that I had made was to potentially reduce the, uh, I, uh, well, uh, let me back up a little bit. Uh, as you remember from the original proposed budget, by the time we got through all of the expenditures and revenues, there was only a $9,000 cushion at the end um, of revenue over expenses. So at that time, uh, because that margin was so small, I suggested that really the only place in the budget that we could look would be service that we don't have to provide, and that's the sheriff's uh, uh, project uh, contract, because that's an optional expenditure. We, we're not required to do that. Well, if I may interject, um, the 9,000 then also had would have to cover any raises that were going to go in Correct. for the one and a half, two percent, or whatever, right. and whatever difference would be necessary to cover the insurance the health insurance because we only have 12 percent budgeted and we're hearing 20 to 30 percent right so that nine thousand isn't going to go very far no and we budgeted that 12 percent based upon prediction that we got from our agent to begin with uh, pr based on very preliminary uh, returns that he had seen he estimated that 12 percent would be a reasonable figure to put in the budget so that's what we built and as it turned out uh, our current uh, plan came back at 30.2 percent or 32.1 percent that's what it was 32.1 which obviously we're not <coughs> going to accept uh, so we're right now in the process of looking at other options and uh, as uh, supervisor Durant indicated we have 12 percent in the budget the one that looks uh, most uh, comparable to the plan that we currently have with Blue Cross is 20.23 uh, percent I believe it was uh, but there is also a second plan that uh, now we, we qualify for, so we could have two options, and that might drop that 20% down. We don't know that as yet. So that, that's still a, uh, uh, an item for consideration in the budget, ultimately, as we go forward. We won't know an answer to that until we get to the point of actually adopting a budget, <coughs> most likely. Um, but the, the question of the, the Sheriff's Department, what I suggested was if we, we wanted to look at at uh, retaining uh, some cushion in our budget, we could back the uh, sheriff's contract from 80 hours to 20, or 80 hours down 20 to 60 hours. That would save us about $48,000 in round numbers, uh, and we would then limit the sheriff's activity <coughs> to strictly law enforcement and traffic control uh, on residential complaints and not provide any of the loss control services to the commercial community. So that was my rationale. Uh, the residents, you know, who are who are paying the, the, the full boat on the taxes now would still have the full service, uh, but we would be uh, reducing the uh, uh, the uh, well uh, retail fraud uh, that's been right. eating up a lot of the sheriff's time. How do you control that? Uh, through a through the contract number one, uh, we would specify that the, the the funded portion that we that we provide is specifically for residential law enforcement uh, response and for traffic control, and then we would uh, notify central dispatch that on those uh, retail fraud claims that come in, our deputy would not be dispatched on that. They would wait for the regular patrol deputies, send the or or state police, and they could send the closest car. Yes. And yeah, I, I like that idea. I really do. I think that why should we pay to have these box well, stores? Well, if you think about it, the whole rationale when that was done, when that contract was originally entered into, was for additional law enforcement protection for our residential areas, for uh, for Trowbridge and the other, uh, you know, Huron Woods, Bishop Woods, the, the residential areas of the township, so that we would have... Uh, a presence that the residents would not have to wait. At the time, we were having some issues with break-ins. We were having some roaming folks that were doing uh, vandalism-type damage to vehicles and a variety of things, so we wanted to have a, a closer presence uh, to be able to respond to those rather than waiting a half hour or 20 minutes for the uh, regular patrol, recognizing that at certain times of the day, there may only be one or two cars patrolling the entire uh, county. Uh, so it was at that time that the board made the decision to bite the bullet and fund it out of the general fund. It is purely funded out of general fund. There's no millage involved in it. There's no assessment involved in it. So 
it's uh, it's $194,000 a year that we put towards it. And uh, what we've seen uh, over the last few years is that much of that time is devoted to retail fraud. So uh, if we eliminate that, my theory was we could cut the contract by about 20 hours. Randy? I don't think the residents will even notice, in my opinion, because right now they were spending their time at the big box stores, and now they'll be, maybe they'll even notice a more. Bit, a more of a presence because they'll be in the township doing our activities that we specify. Yep, it's a better use of funds in my mind, too. Well, and we're very thin. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I was first. Yeah. I just had a question. If, if the deputies write any traffic violation tickets, does that go into our general fund then? Where's the library? No, it, it, actually, uh, it actually goes to the district court. Uh, you know, the, the district court takes, uh, takes the bulk of that. Nothing comes here. We, we don't get revenue from the traffic citations. But at the same time, you know, we, we have, uh, we have uh, accumulated a reputation for being unsafe that isn't warranted for us. It's simply because the traffic violations are not being enforced. Uh, they're not being addressed. The illegal left turns at the Commerce Light, the speed, the distracted driving, all of those things uh, are not being addressed currently. Oh, that's because they're over at Walmart or Target or that's, somewhere else. That's my point. Yeah, it's... I like that idea. Go ahead, John. The point is, uh, when some time ago we could have backed up and said, let's do exactly what we're asking now. Let's not have the 80 hours spent with, uh, with our people being called off and put over on the big box stores. Um, and... Uh, I'm just being careful about when you're reducing it, we're gonna to have to make sure that the citizens understand that what we're reducing the patrol for is what's going on at the stores. I think they would much rather have had us say, let's just take that full 80 hours and ask that it be spent on patrol. This wouldn't be the first time. Um, if you look at if you look in your budget on uh, page 101.9, if you look at 2014, we were down to 139,500. We were at 60 hours, so we've gone 80, 60, yeah. 80, 60. I mean, we we've, we've done that in the past. Uh, you know, and realistically, this is you know, back six years ago, Supervisor Limita at the time, and I told you. Along about 18 or 19, we're going to be in a spot where we're going to have to make some very difficult decisions because the revenue is not there anymore. Uh, and that was, you know, we've we've whittled away our fund balance. You know, uh, right right off the bat, we had to refund three years of taxes, and then we've had three more years of of living on reserves. Basically, um, we're at the point now where we've got a nine thousand dollar cushion. That's all. Remember, two years ago, three years ago, we had a hundred thousand. Yeah. It's, it's just that you have to realize that if there is something very unpopular funded by the township, people are going to say, you're, you're taking money from the patrol for this unpopular item. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to face. Well, the they'll say going to face that. I, yeah. I, I realize we have to face reality but that that that's it's your car john oh it just stopped probably bumped your fob in your pocket or something <laughs> can we get a report on how many hours in the last two years have have been spent on an average per month just on retail fraud well, i think we can yeah i think the sheriff's department tracks that i'm pretty sure they do we get it every month well, but you, know, you don't get the number well, of hours. You just get the number of Well, of it's two hours for every time you got that. It's two hours. If at least. Yeah, at least by the yeah. time they go and do the reports and everything. 
but you know but I guess the point is what is it that what is it that the township wants to accomplish with the law enforcement dollars that are being spent do do you, do you want actual residential responses in traffic control or do you want um, spending time doing retail fraud and other type activities I think if if our residents knew the amount of hours that are spent on retail fraud um, that they're paying for that I don't think they would be very happy with that anyhow no. I mean that's not the responsibility of our residents to pay for the big box stores to have somebody that we're paying for let it come out of the state police or other patrol units that happen to be out there they may have to wait half an hour yeah you know well, re realistically my focus when I went through this was you know we went into this budget with the expectation that we were not going to reduce direct services to the residents or any of the things that were required to uh, to uh, perform and it came down to recreation and law enforcement is what it came down to and the question then is uh, do we stop in midstream uh, the efforts that we're making in, rec in recreation or do we do we look at streamlining the law enforcement um, you know that's two hundred thousand dollars in recreation is not anywhere near that but we still have some things we have to do we have to finish up Lions Field uh, we've got uh, the trailhead at Schwemwood we've got a number of number of things that are in the works do we stop those or do we change the law enforcement I mean that's that's what I came down to um, I didn't want to cut uh, any of the things out of the planning budget or the zoning or obviously we can't cut anything out of the uh, assessing uh, yeah, so I mean, we've got very few places that we can actually make a, a cut of any kind of sig significance. And I'm very uncomfortable going into the winter with only $9,000 in the bank. Randy, have you talked to uh, the store, like Walmart and that? What are they doing? Like I said before, when I contacted uh, down in Appleton in there, they said over $100. When, when do they call here? Is it because of $5 or something like that? or? It was, and we, we've tightened up on that, but it's still, it, it's still a draw. And, you know, and the, the question is, can we live with 60 hours, or do we need, feel we need eight, 80? Uh, from my perspective, it never was a, a reduction to take any coverage away from the residents. Uh, I just think it's foolish that we spend 80 hours, and a large portion of that goes to the retail fraud. I don't think we should be saddled. I don't think the residents should be saddled with paying for that. And I think, uh, if anything, the residents are going to see an increase in coverage as opposed to a reduction with, with, uh, with more of a directed uh, coverage and just not include the retail fraud in, in the 60 hours. Mm -hmm. We kind of have consensus that we want to go to 60 from 80. The contract's up the end of the year. so. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to decide tonight, but well, no, it's a discussion. You know, it's a discussion point. Uh, you know, it's you you have don't have a lot of options this year in terms of of where you head. I would be in favor of reducing the uh, the budget to reflect sixty hours as opposed to eighty. As long as he, they eliminate the retail fraud portion of it. How do you that do that? Hold on, I, I that think I think if, if contract. they're not willing to renegotiate that contract to the point that we can eliminate retail fraud, there's there's something else we need to take a look at because we're not getting what we're paying for. Exactly. It, you know, and realistically, all we would be be doing is redefining your contract to what what is it that the township wants for the money they're spending? What service are you buying? And the service that that I suggest that you are buying is residential response and traffic enforcement are, are the two key items that you know that you as a governing body are obligated to perform the individuals the individual stores and the the business community can provide their own loss control uh, they do all over the place in fact i think they do now it's just that they don't intervene at all you know they identify somebody who is uh, in, engaging in, a, in an improper act and they watch them until they get outside the store and then they let law enforcement take it over well, they obviously do something if the deputy is not on duty, so they're just going to have to do that all the time. Who's making that call? Central dispatch. That's what I mean. That they have to see well, if it's a store. Well, if they know our there. deputy doesn't do retail fraud, they'll just send the, the closest car. Yeah. Whether it be another county unit or a state unit or whomever. 
Yeah, but, but understand, you know, you know, the when we were discussing this uh, staff-wise, you know, within within the staff, that question came up about, you know, it it is a it is a law, and you know, my response to that was, we're buying a service. This is not something we're obligated to provide. So, what service is it that we want to provide? And you want to provide residential service to the folks that are paying property taxes, and you want to provide safety through the corridor, in particular the corridor, because we get so much bad press about the unsafe corridor. It's only unsafe because of the driver behaviors. It's not the corridor. That's got to be our priority. You never see the deputy sitting there to try to catch somebody speeding or illegal turns or... More so recently, no, but yeah, you do. not too He'd much. He'd seen him watch a guy take a left in. <laughs> yeah, he watched him. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, well, I've seen it. I mean, you know... I, I see it too, but uh, you know the, the the point is, unless we start enforcing some of those, it's never going to change. You know, you got to start having some people pulled over on the side of the road visibly, so people see it's being enforced. Monthly reports provided by them don't indicate very many tickets for 80 hours of work. And you know, admittedly, yeah. admittedly, in in their defense, it is difficult to pull somebody over on the U.S. 41 corridor because there really isn't anywhere. To pull them over hardly you know outside of the traffic other than up on the safety strip so it, it's you know b but again um, I think we can better spend the time that's Jason's problem because he didn't put that extra lane in there there's a lot of parking lots they're pulling over in my parking lot all the yeah. time they can pull over in the mall or auto zone that's there's room they just have to go a little farther. I guess the bottom line is if, if we want to have some, some financial cushion, some financial reserve, there aren't many places we can get it from. I'd be in favor of going back to 60 hours. Me too. Mm -hmm. yep. I think that's consensus. I think if we do that, we have to then be, be cognizant of anything else that comes up that we're just not going to. Uh, we can always change it. it. We can always Because there's no it. dollars there right now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we have no cushion, like Randy said. That 9000 is going to go for something. So we don't even, we not only don't have more, we don't have enough to cover what we need right now. We know we need more. Anything over 12% on the health insurance that has to come out of that 9000 It's not much. Okay, so we kind of have consensus on that. Yeah. On that. Let's um, go to something else. Um... Any questions on the budget itself that was rerun? Jason, Jason has a oh, suggestion. Oh, sure. Uh, good afternoon. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. Um, two things that came to mind at the end of this process. Actually, it's been in, the, in, in my mind for a while. But uh, first, the community room is well received, well used, and uh, has a lot of different types of people renting it businesses organizations individuals families etc um, in my opinion uh, we could use some better AV equipment in there um, in my opinion we could use drop-down screen and an in-ceiling projector the one TV that we have now at the time when we developed the pro you know the building uh, the 60 inch television which is this size uh, you know we have three of them in here and that room's probably a time and a half bigger than it is now. So I attended a, a workshop at Northern Michigan University, and of course that's Northern up in Cohotus, but they had a giant 100-inch uh, TV in there, and you could see that from anywhere in the room very clearly. Um, we did have an estimate done, I think it was a couple years ago, from you know Best Buy's Geek Squad team, and they, they estimated that be for between I want to say it was three and four thousand dollars. They could really put a nice unit in there that could be used. You could, you could have the, keep the TV in there where it is, but then on the long wall, like on the on the east wall, you could have a, a screen that would drop down. I think that it would make uh, a big difference in usership, and I think that the, our that our uh, rates, you know, for renting the, the space are adequate enough and I, I was going to have Andrew put together you know how much you know we've been making off the room or excuse me paying back towards the uh, um, the payoff of the room but uh, just something to think about 
and something that could be imp implemented fairly quickly if the board was able to find um, that amount of money. Um, secondly, as you know, we have our new staff planner on board. Um, he's been doing a great job. He's made it through his probationary period, and I assume he will be here for, for some time. Um, that being said, uh, Randy and I have discussed and would like your opinion on converting one of the, uh, the small conference room potentially into an office for him. Um, as a professional planner, it helps to have a room where you can have um, uh, confidential conversations and sometimes in the bullpen in the office it gets kind of loud in there and um, you know I don't think it would cost very much and I, I, I suspect that I can as absorb that cost uh, out of my budget even uh, the way it's presented now to outfit him with uh, some office furniture if that's the, the rate the way that the, the board wants to go but it's something that I'd like you guys to consider and, and Randy suggested that I run through you prior to um, you know I guess making any decisions on my own but I think it's I think that smaller conference room is a bit underutilized it's a nice uh, feature to have and I know that that smaller conference room is the exact same size as our offices the rest of the offices and I think it was actually designed that way in case we have another staff person that we wanted to outfit with a with a with an office so just something to think about and I would appreciate any of your comments and or questions about that if you have any it sounds good but I'm looking at when the auditors are in there they use that small conference room the whole time they're in there and it's, if we want to use a conference room we go to the big one so there is a, a downsize to doing that so it's used at different times in that too so yeah well you could use this room here they could yeah. use the community room too yeah we have space so this this room is this board room is basically this room used for meetings we really don't rent this room so this room is free a lot of the time but what i was thinking one day we could put three tables in that room right there and you can always use the tables when the auditors come yeah the conference room table could be brought in anywhere the community room or in That's here just storage back there or, yeah. yeah it's stored in or you can have it right in front here meetings yeah, or whatever those storage units uh units um that room there is the size of a small office and plenty of room for a table and chairs just the suggestion um you know like i said both those items are something that were were thought out pretty thoroughly and i think what happens is whenever there's something going on in a community room i'm the one that responds to the geek squad questions and goes and hooks up this computer or that printer or that projector it would be nice to have something that's not so clunky and really easy to use um, for all the different people that that rent the room and then also to uh, to tag on to jason the the community room does not have its own uh, sound system it's tagged onto this system here yeah. And it's kind of awkward because we can't, I guess we thought of it was good at the time, but if we have a board meeting in here and we have something going in the community room, that sound system cannot be used because they're going to get our conversation in there. So I think uh, we should separate the systems just to make it usable. Lois, do we? I didn't realize we don't have a separate account. I know you guys both had questions. We didn't have a separate account for the community room, do we? In revenues? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, we got revenues. A separate we revenue. Yeah. Not, well, it's not in the budget. It's oh, yeah, it's not in the yeah. Okay, sorry. Monthly, monthly one, you'll see it. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Yeah, actually, Dave, Dan was first. I was just wondering. Um, I understand there are several. I won't say businesses or organizations that use the room for nothing, correct? Government. I'm sorry? Government. Yeah. Um, I think all government, right? Well, yeah, I know the, the, the ones that we directly participate in or work with. The, Why is that? That's a, well, it's, it's, it's the same as residents. Residents pay a different rate than what non-residents do, and those governmental entities that, that we that either support us or that we work with, we don't charge them to use it. But that doesn't mean we couldn't. Well, when the, car when the carpet is ruined and things are broke or whatever, 
who's going to pay to yeah or, that's, that's, or right uh, now it's a bigger of sound system i mean uh, even a hundred dollars or well, something we, I, we can certainly uh, revisit the uh, rental fee is very low i just i don't know i think it's a it's a very nice room um i just think people should have to pay something to use it we, we can certainly do that do they judge do they that was basically an administrative decision. The board didn't act on that. So I mean, if 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 we uh, you know I mean we are in we are in need of revenue. So there is certainly nothing wrong with uh, you know making a change that as of January first we were revising the rates. Looking at what uh, Jason is talking about as far as electronics and that, we're getting these dollars from Charter every quarter and that mm -hmm. we put them in a separate account now. And that was for electronic communication stuff. Yep. communications is that something that we want to look at taking that dollars and utilizing it I don't know it's it's a thought in that it's part of the budget right now it's just part of the general fund yeah it's in the general fund it's revenues it. it's part of that 9,000 that's left well that was supposed to be used for we never really we wanted to but we never really made a motion well we've we've used it we've used it for a lot of we used it for some of these materials in the construction project and the process as well I mean it's we've been uh, tapping most of our reserve funds for operations I mean in the last couple of years we can do that too Randy yeah I know I think a lot of the organizations are charged to use our room, but I, I think if you charged a nominal fee of like even fifty to a hundred dollars, I don't think that's going to preclude from any of these organizations from using it, because we have a great facility, we got great parking, and they love to come here. So, and we've been the same since we opened. I think it would only make it more attractive actually to have those improved AV. John. Not only is it a great facility, and I think that I think that most of these groups that use the room used to have it in their budget anyway. They, 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 when they were getting other locations to hold their meetings, they were used to paying mm -hmm. a sizable amount of money. So I, I, I think that's a good suggestion, not necessarily for our own residents but I think that for the units that do use it that are organized and they have budgets I think that uh, some kind of increase so that we could add to the facilities make it more palatable for them that's great the other point I want to make is that we've gone to the trouble of hiring another person to work with the planner and work on these projects that we've got once you've done that you have to look at what how do you get the best results out of having those people on board and I can tell you that someone who is doing what he's doing out there having an office that you can close the door will result in a better product from the individual. It, it just does. And so I think that we've made the first step, we've got it, and we've got some qualified people. Let's give them the best shot they can take by giving them a facility to work in where they can have the privacy to look at some of these very complex things. Appreciate your comments. Thank you. Okay. Randy? Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with converting the small conference room into an office. If we really need that extra small conference room, Jason's correct. That room back there, which is a storage right now, is plenty big enough for a small conference room. If we do need one, we could convert that storage room right there to a small conference room if we really need one something that that he's going to use every day and if it inconveniences other people a couple times a year uh, so be it yeah like I said that room back there is plenty big enough if if we need to make that we just 
there's just partitions in there in the Christmas tree. So we can always put that in, in our storage we have down the road. So You don't want the auditors to be too comfortable here. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> and yes, Pete. Uh, the revenue as of the end of September is $8,740 for the community room. Wow. That's impressive. And those are with nominal fees. I, I agree with uh, Trustee Marks' comments and, and, uh, and Trustee Everson's comments about, you know, the DNR can afford to rent the room. Uh, uh, Fish and Wildlife, uh, they all have federal and state have funding. So, I mean... Those are the folks that we, you know, should should be, not gouging, but you know, uh, taking advantage of their their funds. We have a beautiful room. Uh, I would put this room up against any room around here. And plus, we're so centrally located; it's easily accessible, and and people love the you know the photos on the wall. They love. We, we get lots of positive comments. So, I think it only, you know, look at a restaurant like I used to work at the Casa in high school. They've always put money back into their restaurant keep doing well to keep doing well well that's because they invest in that and so I would just assume that we would continue to do the same we'll do some new pictures up on the wall we'll do a, a fresh AV system and I think it'll go much more smoother or much more smoothly uh, moving into next year if that's possible do they pay for the holiday oh it, diff, different agencies if they, I, go I, to, they don't pay for the room but you have to buy the meals you have to get the food from that get the food place so. what well, will leave water out there <laughs> Foods where they make, you always foods do where the they make the money. I just assumed that we we would charge everybody and that nobody. Got I agree. I mean, that's I was I was kind of flabbergasted when I I heard that we did not that we had government agencies getting it for free, and I thought that's just not right. It, it's not as uh, as regular as you think, though. It's I think it's only a couple times a year, only a couple groups that I've heard of, but. You know, we have an investment that we need to take care of, and, and, and now if we put a little bit more in that investment, then we need to recoup that, so. Ernie? We were on DNR and the rest of them were the, that were using the room in there. When we first started, we weren't charging them anything, and I questioned it, and all of a sudden we started charging. So I said, they got their own budgets. I've seen their budgets. They have budgets mm -hmm. for meeting rooms and everything else in that. So we just did. I don't know how far we went with that. So I think the other, changing gears to the uh, room for the other planner by m converting that into a, a office we are growing and there's no question about that how fast we grow is going to be something else in that too but we're going to be out of office spaces around the edge unless some people are starting to share offices and that and I've been through that so so you're back into the center center aisle again into the bullpen so that's something we have to look at the future too because we talked about that when we're building the building that if we ran out of room first thing we're going to do is move into the community room partition that off so I think that's a few into the future yet but uh, that's the next step so. either that or you build in the middle you yeah put walls in the middle. walls around it yes Miss Lois so Basically, we probably don't charge if it's something we're participating in. If if Dulcie's generally assessors or something, yeah, like clerks meeting, we don't. Yeah. but it's only an hour. It's our stuff. Yeah, Dave. I would would think, and I hate to put a damper on this whole thing, but I would think we need to refer this back to the manager uh, to come up with a yeah. proposed rate structure, and and I would think right along with that proposed rate structure would be the justification and where you're going to in that proposed rate structure be able to pay for the new screen it's just it's I don't think it's something for, that the board needs to consider other than say work up a new rate structure the same as as converting that small conference room I think you need to see some costs where the money's coming from and then it's just a matter of we're going to do it or we aren't we don't really have any any costs to do that yet so yeah well he wanted to see if we were going to be amenable to any of this if we said no there's no yeah. point in going any farther. So the next step would be just think you have said. This is what I would like for Christmas. Consensus. <laughs> I think put it in writing, give it to the board, and we'll have to make a decision yeah. at that give point. Give it to the manager. Yeah, I really need to support this. Yeah, yeah th and that's what I was looking for, and then I can yeah. work with Randy. Yeah. I, I think yeah. we can uh, squeeze it out of my budget. I think it would be 
couple thousand for office furniture. Yeah, you're not he already has much. a computer. He doesn't need anything else. Maybe a telephone. But the, the room is the room is uh, equipped the same as any other office. All yeah. of everything is there. And it was designed that way. It'll also allow us to have an intern uh, in the planning department be sitting where Isaac is now too. So, and we do we are going to chase that. We do want interns uh, working here. Obviously, they they do really well when they come here. So, Isaac's been great. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to work with him one on one yet. Um, but he's been outstanding, and, and we're very lucky to have him. Okay. Anything else on that? Thank you. Good. Thanks. Next. Anything else for anybody else? Randy, you had suggested at one point, and a, a couple other board members too, about wage increases for our committees and this board. Yeah, I have a. We have to kind of. I have a spreadsheet that Lois put together here. Um, it's for every. It's the supervisor, board, clerk, treasurer, planning commission, board of review, and ZBA, which is our paid committees. Um, if we. Uh, it's a, if it's a if we do a two percent increase for everyone, it's a one thousand two hundred ninety eight dollar increase. So it really isn't that much. The way the wages were last adjusted in two thousand eight. Ten years. Are we dedicated or what? Yes, Dave. I would I would hope that if you decide to do something with the wages, that it would be something along the same lines that applies to everybody else that works here. Uh, we, there's a formula that the manager has put together already and I would think we would apply ourselves to the same formula. And That would be easy? I personally wouldn't support anything else. Okay. I think it sets ourselves apart from somebody we shouldn't be setting ourselves apart from. We're not They've Congress. We've raises for the last 10 years, and we I'm didn't. Not. So, I mean, if you all want that, to try all to be that aside. Hey, Dave, <laughs> we're <Yeah>. not Congress. <laughs> we're not doubling ourselves. I'm still surprised <laughs> I get a check for this. <laughs> You're just having too much fun? Is yeah. that it? i got to give you more work? Must be it. That's it. I don't have a problem either way. The only problem is, is um, if we increase our salary, uh, we have to put it in a resolution for the December meeting so and we should have these num I think you have the numbers already right Randy for the adjusted wage for this, yep. this well year. I, I think if you agree on that same formula for for annually affecting then all that no one can complain. then yeah. we never have to Point go back forward, and do it yeah. again we're just we're that's what it is yeah. and next year we're the same thing I don't have a problem with that totally makes sense Okay, so we kind of have consensus on that in the, in the uh, police department. Um, seemed like there was one more I had. Oh, I just want to, this is a little off topic, but we, um, do you know when we approved the CIP? Years ago. <laughs> but that was part of my discussion with Kirk yesterday. And I told them, at one point we were looking at trying to buy a package and they were cost prohibitive and we didn't have the money or the time to put it together. So I put this spreadsheet together and I think you've all seen it at one point. Just It's a one page on each project and you just put down the amortization and the years and everything. So Kirk said he's been doing this and I said the board never sees this. So I just wanted to kind of mention that when we have this discussion in January or whenever we do about the CIP, we need to have something in place. If we don't come up with something else, we need to have something to look at to justify what he's trying to present or whether it's a vehicle or a police vehicle or something like that. So we're going to back up and kind of regroup when we talk about the CIP. I'm just going to force us to have a meeting in January. Just so you know, it's just something I brought up. Yes, Dave. As long as we're off subject. <laughs> it's all part of the budget. I, I know, but I would think that we would step it back a little bit further than that CIP because I think we've got um, a master plan for the uh, that has been amended since 2013. I think we need to review that. Yeah. And that's the thing that the board should get involved in. And 
that should come before the CIP because once the master plan is done, then everything in the CIP should line up with what's in the master plan. And I think to do that, there's a big, thick report from Stantec with the water analysis and study. Uh, that, just, needs, yeah, just said that. that needs to be reviewed. Um, yep. And I'd just like to see that on a board agenda sooner rather than later just to discuss the general direction. But I would think the first thing this board needs to do is is decide whether they want to amend that master plan because that's where you start with uh, what are you going to do with phase two and when's it going to be done. Right. So I already talked to Jason. Planning everything is everything works from that, so I would think that would be the board responsibility to fix that first. Yeah. You're gonna planning is gonna start working on that in January. So we got that rolling. So this is part of it. This is our part of it to how that fits in. So that's all I had. Anybody else has got? Dave, you said you had some questions. I, I had some budget? questions about, uh, and it's not the general fund. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. this is open. Wide open. Yep. It's on the water and the wastewater, and it, is, it has to do with the surpluses in each one of those. And they're on. Uh, we can start tackle the water first. It's a general comment. Uh, in the water, we have a uh, surplus. It's under nine fifty-five. It's page fifteen. Uh, we in the new one now. In the new one. Underwater. Yep. And uh, down at the bottom of page 15, there's a uh, contingency with a miscellaneous. And we put all of our surplus funds from our rate freezes and uh, CIP abatements this year. We put it into the same contingency fund. I would suggest that the money that comes out of that maneuver should go someplace else so it is more designated for what it was intended for and we doesn't get dipped into and maybe the manager would have some recommendation as to what that account should be and where it should be. But I would think it would be there and in the wastewater that that money would be earmarked for in a different fund so that we know where that money came from and what it was intended for because it's intended for this board to decide what you want to do with that, whether it's pay off debt service or do what ever and it shouldn't be it's, I just don't think it should be part of that contingency money because. Right, yeah, I agree. Lois, what do you think? Where can we put that? Do you want to do another account under contingency? Or do you want to, we don't want to set it up as a capital because we I'm just want a holding place. I'm just not sure what you'd call it. Or what? Retained earnings. Well, well it'll, it'll be, not a budget probably be though. spent this year. We just don't want it to get lost and we don't want Kirk to spend it. <laughs> well, we don't want us to spend it. Yeah. <laughs> we've only got a nine thousand dollar contingency there, and, and now we've made it a hundred and fifty. Well, that's in the general. Yeah, this can't is mix water. the water. You can't yeah, mix the water. water. Exactly. <laughs> so well, if you want to anyway. yeah. put it, I don't know, just a temporary something or other, just so we can identify it. Well, if you want to identify it, you need to identify it. Maybe the manager got an idea what to call that. Fund. I mean, basically, you've got operation and maintenance funds, you've got debt funds, you've got replacement and improvement funds, and then you've got miscellaneous. The miscellaneous is whatever is left over. And if you want to designate, you designate it for one of the other areas. Well, or I mean, and, I th and I think that's what you want to do, but uh, I want to pay off debt with it. I, if we want to try to do that before December, we, it was just trying to get the budget organized. Right. We can do that in January. There has to be a way to designate that. There must be something in the chart of accounts that we can that we can locate to to cl clarify. Basically, what you're talking about is you're talking about financial decision that you've made to set money aside and you want to make sure it doesn't get used for something that you don't want to use it for. Right. So it right. must be, I mean, it's not really a restricted, it's restricted from the standpoint that you're restricting it. It's not a legally restricted fund like Kirk's talking about. Right. It's um, earmarked, uh, but it's not let's really take a Let us take a look at the chart of accounts and see what we can come up with is in terms of a, a, a good existing definition, a financial 
I, that's that's in our chart of accounts that we could potentially plug in there to identify that. I would, I would like to see us do that in water and in wastewater. Mm -hmm. Can we, Randy, um, come up with, since the consensus is, if I'm not over speaking, to pay down debt, can we get an estimated number from you or Lois at some point? What you know, if we paid these January 15th or something or whenever the next payment's due, how, what the money is, how, what can we pay off? Sure. By the time you get rid of the interest that we're not going to have to pay, um, wh what is that number? Is it the whole 80000 or whatever? Or? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty easily calculated. I and mean, all you're talking about is paying the principal. You're not going to pay any right. interest that's going to accrue. You're just going to pay the principal. So the some. savings on the interest is right off the bat. But, but that also increases the, un, the amount of those, you, you know, you don't have to include the interest you know, cost in there. So you're just looking yeah. at the principal cost to knock down. Got some of these are, some of them are year. like once or twice a year we more. pay them. So there's going to be accumulated interest we're not going to have to pay. If right. we pay it in January, the payment's not due till July or something. Right. You know, what some of these yeah. aren't every it month. It can be looked at. And that's, that's not to make that part of the budget process, right? That's just some additional information right. so we can decide what to right. do. Yeah, but if we wait too long, it's going to be February, March, and none of oh, this I think that's, a, that's an early next week kind of thing. Yeah. Yep, that would be great. And it, maybe we can decide by the end of the year what we want to do, if we have that number. There's a number of things we had to sign. Questions, or? We've got sidebar going. Yeah. It's just... Just for the record, uh, when we signed the library contract, one of the issues they had to sign on as well was that library uh, traffic traffic yeah, fines yeah, would go. Penal fines. Pen the penal fines. Yeah. 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 We didn't have a choice on it under state statute. If we didn't sign it, they didn't get it, we didn't get it anyway. Yeah. It's in a fund. Well, I don't think that at least no, we don't that get it. I, I, just, I just want you to know who did get it. Yeah. I don't think we should leave that die yet. One of these days we should. It, it didn't all go to the court. Without, without, you know, blowing it all out of proportion, just what are the steps that changed. And I think John knew what the steps were that we had to change, but when it got so blown out of proportion there for a while, it's just crazy. But if you look at the penal fines, we're struggling to pay for it. We should be getting some penal fines for our costs of enforcement. You know? Paying his wages. John took a beating on that one. It, it's part, part of the reason we're not is, is state legislation. Right. I mean, uh, that happens over and over again. But I just, we need to know where things are going, even though we don't have any control over it. I think what the way, the status of the states and stuff like that, where they're, you know, working on budgets and that, and they understand it more. Uh, I, I think it might be a good time to start on something like that. We can add that. Just let me know when you want to put something on the agenda. You're all welcome to add anything. Dave, you had a couple more. Bob, uh, they're not actually. Uh, Budget related, I guess the one is I was wondering what the contracted services were for under stormwater. Um, the under expenditures, 801, there's $1,500. And I've just, is that just a general thing or is that for something specific? Well, right. The only, the stormwater fund really doesn't receive any revenues. So, uh, our, our ordinance, the water management ordinance, uh, establishes a fee schedule, and you know this was thoroughly discussed back in 2016. Uh, and what it is, the only non-refundable uh, portion of that is $500. So that's why for every project we have, we're only going to receive $500 in revenue. There, and then there's a deposit, a minimum of $5,000, that's based on the estimated cost of construction. Uh, and out of that deposit, we pay, we've got contracted services to do things like review, in some cases, possibly inspection, but it's mainly legal and engineering review. But we get reimbursed for all that, don't we? No, that's what he's saying. There's a $5,000 deposit, and then we only keep 500 but the, any of those 
things that have to happen in the meantime, the inspections and stuff, come out of the 5,000 that they give us. I was, I was under the understanding with that stormwater ordinance that the developer paid uh, all the review costs. Correct. And that's what the deposit is for. So. Okay, so, so I'm but back but we to have to pay. <laughs> so whatever the cost is, does come out of that. So. I guess that didn't answer my question. I, okay. I, I was, it's my understanding that the monies you're talking about, the deposit, and what the contractor or the developer pays, he pays for all of our in-house reviews of his stormwater plans and all that stuff. So my right, question yeah. was, I didn't mean that, I, I just thought it was an easy question, is what is $1,500 worth of contracted services for? So I think that's car ball, isn't it? The review plan. That would be well, stuff that we it, want yeah. that we have to have done. Yeah, we did that with um, some of was it Mahaney's last year? We had um, we had some stuff that we sent to the attorney to get clarified. So we would have to pay for that. Right. In the stormwater fund. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it was. It was one of the developments up there. I remember being in your office talking about it, and you were showing me the bills, and there was a difference, and you said that it was something that you had requested from Roger, so we had to pay for it to get clarification on something. Well, but we're also responsible well, for some plan review, and that's, you know, we usually contract with Carl, Carl Baldwin to, to, do, to do that. Yeah, that's, Baldwin was one of them. Yeah, I, under, I understand that, but that money that we spend to have him review that is covered by the actual developer pays that that fee. Not right. all of it. Not always. We, no. we pay for some of that. It could be something no. we're asking for. Not at all? Okay. I thought we no. did. That's only oh, if we if we request something that's not specifically related to right. that project. Okay. Yeah. So it's just there in case we need something. It's it, yeah, it's just yeah. basically okay. balance, balance the budget. All right. That's all it is. That was the end of my question. That's it. Okay. The last, the last thing right. <laughs> was uh, the stormwater ordinance that, and this is totally unrelated to the budget, I would like to see that get on an agenda so we can take a look at it because there's a number of things there that don't make sense to me. Okay. Right off the top of my head, I don't understand why the stormwater ordinance is not in part of our other ordinances as part of planning. And I guess the the review process that we go through or that the developers go through for uh, their stormwater plans. Um, they have to come up with a plan and then we have to pay another engineer to review the same plan that, a, that an engineer come up with. It seems like we're charging a developer to pay for that twice. And it seems to me we only have two engineering firms that are authorized to do uh, stormwater plants. So it just seems like we're constantly using the same two engineering firms to check each other. And if they're approved, they're approved. I don't know why we have to have an approved firm be checked by another approved firm. Well, partly because we take responsibility and ownership, and we want to make sure that what they're understanding, I mean, that that's not my decision, but would you want to start with talking to Kirk first, and or does everybody want to sure. go through that? We can. No, I can. I can. But Talk to her. So he's still talking to me. Yeah, he's still talking. To me. <laughs> yes, Ernie. Okay. On, on solid waste, I just have a question that, and I don't know if I brought it before under uh, uh, community promotion. Can you tell me what we're using fifteen thousand dollars on community promotion? Because I'm trying to go back through the water and the wastewater, and I don't see anything in there. So. Solid waste you're talking about? Solid waste, yeah. Number 880? Yes. Is that the bins, the bins and such? What's the, what's the question? Solid waste. Promotion. What is it? Mm -hmm. 15,000. It's, the, it's a monthly drop off, uh, you know, the first Wednesday. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's the ads in the papers and that and. Yeah, and okay. labor costs and then plus it's also. The first Wednesday uh, operations. Right. It's also the extra leaf drop off. I think part the fall, of the fees in there is all well, those right? kinds of things. Okay, it's all the ads in the paper. Okay. The contractual fee? Yeah. Right. Okay. 
Okay. Dipping fees. For for that. Pardon? Dipping fees for that drop off as well. Anything else? Hmm. I think we have a consensus budget. I think so. Okay, then we can give the manager direction to go ahead and post it. Get the ad together for the mining journal? Yep. Good. Talking about a public hearing on the 5th then? Correct. Um, it, well, I'll get back with you the final, with the official date. You know, the mining journal is going to need a few days to get the ad ready and then to place it. I'll know when it's in and then it's seven days after that. So we can target for the 5th. But by the 15th of December. Yeah, if we if we have it if we have it on the fifth on the fifth then we should be good. Um, when you get that adjusted wage increase, let me know and then I'll have Lois compute. You want it in percent? Yeah. <laughs> I know you should have that number shortly because I have That's to put a resolution question. together for that. Should be. I'm guessing by hopefully this coming week we'll have that last figure. Yeah, we'll need the health insurance to plug in here anyway. Well, we should have, hopefully we'll have that by the end of next week. Hopefully we should have that. We should have a better better picture if we've got uh, the... Done. It, what it's going to involve is we've, we've been approved for the two plans. Now the question is how many people might be interested in that second plan, which will then modify the cost of the first plan, the base plan. So we're really looking at the 19th of December. Probably yeah. for the final adoption, right? Which so is we, what we started out with yeah. in, the, in the plan. We really shouldn't need Monday and Tuesday, right? I don't have my calendar, no. but I believe now, it. Now, the only other piece of this that's still a variable is what's going to happen with the tax tribunal with the uh, with the Menards Escanaba case. That's that's still out there. That case is not even on the docket yet, so I don't suspect they're going to do anything until into 2018. Um, we have other. We've settled a couple, but we have other pending cases. So I do have 25,000 in the general fund miscellaneous, which is where we put the miscellaneous tax uh, tax issue. So I've got that in there for uh, uh, expert witnesses and for uh, presentation of cases. So if the if the tribunal um, follows the direction of the uh, Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals. Uh, or let me reverse that Court of Appeals supported by the Supreme Court, we may get some of our revenue back, but we wouldn't see that until 19. Mm -hmm. Go in? 19. By getting back, because we've mean, already sent out. Oh, yeah, that's right, too. It's, yeah, yeah. By getting back, it means it won't go down as much as we thought. Well, instead of 60%, maybe it'll be 30%. Uh, you know, it, it's not going to be all the way back to what it was because basically what the, what the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court said was is you have to use all three methods to come up with a, a rationale which means that it's it's not going to be highest and best use and it's not going to be dark, dark store it's going to be somewhere in between which is probably going to be around 50 percent so I'm, I'm estimating 2019 we might see about a little bit more revenue coming from the big box stores going forward but you wouldn't see that until 19. Might even be later. Let's hope so. <laughs> it might even be later. It depends yeah, it on when the be. when the tribunal takes up. Depends on whether the tribunal wants to make a point. Next. You know, they they control their own docket. Yeah. See until twenty. Right. Maybe late in eighteen before they hear that case. Just to make a point. There's no effort. There's no effort on the governor's part to amend any of the direction that is given to the tribunal. Or the legislature, the Senate in particular. It's, it's a long time coming. Okay, I think we're finished. And then we'll cancel Sweet. Monday and Tuesday's meetings, work sessions. Thank you. See, we've got a long weekend. <laughs> Board meeting on Tuesday. Woohoo! Monday and Tuesday budget meeting. That'd be the big boy. Okay. Good. 4 13. Thank you. We are finished today.